you came bounding in as Lazarus to finally reveal to your mother your secret identity, the truth, and what you found was an empty house. Shortly after you get home, you search around upstairs, downstairs, nothing, and you get a text on your phone, and what you see is a woman that would be your mother tied up, and this figure who we have met only once before when she nearly killed Labyrinth in the second episode, but you've heard the details of what this assassin looks like. You know that she has a kind of red suit, a bone half mask, stark white hair that ends in red tips, and in her hand is a gnarly knife, like a crescent moon, jagged serrated edges, and her eyes look black and soulless, and your mom's look terrified. But that's all you get is a picture. Zach is going to frantically try and call the number that sent the message. The phone immediately goes to voicemail, as though it were turned off or somebody dismissed your call. I'm going to then respond to the message and say, what do you want and where are you? You get a text back. The book. I'll reply, it's yours. Where is she? We want the book tomorrow, sundown, atop the banner building. My mom will be there. And then you get a text that says, good night, sleep tight, sweet dreams. Zach is just going to let out just a scream and he's just going to punch the fridge and the fridge just like boom, gets crushed. You owe your mom a new fridge. And he just kind of melts into a little puddle on the ground and is just at a loss. But he can see he can see that w what this phone number is, right? It's your mom's phone. It's my mom's phone that I got this from. Yeah. I'm going to send uh, Gary Kenmore a text. See you if... mean Detective Gary Kenmore? Detective Gary or Kenmore. Officer, Officer Gary Kenmore. Well, yeah. I'm going to put both of the brothers on text chain together. Barry I, I got and Gary Kenmore? Barry and Gary. Because, you know, one of them I had a closer relationship. One might have some better ties. And say, can you track this number? And tell them it's of vital importance. You get a text back that says, why is Barry on this chain? <laughs> From Gary. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Barry goes like, hey, fuck you, man. I, I know how to do stuff. It's like, yeah, run away. Oh and it's God. like five minutes of them shitting on each other. I was about to say, are we about to go Just through a 20, 20 minutes of this episode as Barry and Gary trash talking each You're other? You're going to have to step in and be like, guys, guys, focus. Gary says, with reasonable cause, yeah. I'll just respond. Someone... Someone's been kidnapped. I need to know where this phone is. So you're saying I'm a part of the team? You always were. Take a screenshot of that, Barry. And then, like, Barry says, fuck you guys. And then we never hear from <laughs> Barry again. Ever. That's the end of Barry's character for season three of Out of Death Place. As far as you know. Look for him in season five. <laughs> Look no. for him in season five. <laughs> okay. He says, we can do that. I need the number. I give it give to him. him the number. You give him the number, and he says it's going to take a take a little bit, but I'll I'll get back to you. Yeah, while I wait, I'm just going to kind of comb the house and just look for any clues of like a struggle that happened or anything that might have been left behind by the assailant. Yeah, you look around, and quite frankly, like there's no sign of a struggle. The only thing you noticed that was strange was that the door was wide open when you got home. But everything, the TV was on, your mom's favorite blanket that she curls up under when she's watching TV, it's half on the couch, half on the floor. You guys used to cuddle under it together when you were little, but it's too small for that now. The most you can get is your feet, but no struggle, no blood. From the outside, it looks like somebody just stepped outside and didn't walk back in. I'm just going to sit on the ground and 
pull out the book from my chest and just on the floor, just kind of like flip through the pages, just muttering to myself about, you know, what a curse this book has been. As you're flipping through those pages and looking at the key to getting your mother back, hopefully in one piece, do we drift to a different neighborhood in Solus Bay? We follow Gracie Hartwell on her motorcycle. Where's Gracie going tonight, Gail? She is going every which way, trying to make sure that Baron Night- Nightcloak is not following her. She's well aware that she's, um, I believe, on Labyrinth's bike. She's also trying to like remain where she can't be seen, driving through a lot of alleyways, taking a lot of turns and back roads. You're driving around, you realize you don't even have a hideout to go to. I'm really just trying to lose anyone following, and um, after probably a half an hour of just going around in almost circles, I finally start to head home. Gracie's home. You get to your apartment. There's nobody there. It's just you and a giant snake. I pick up Madame Zorita, give her a kiss, put her in her feeding cage, and uh, put a mouse in there. And then I pack a bag. Do you think you're going to leave? Do you think you're going to get out of town? Is that how scared you are right now? Not far from town. But out of town? Yeah, something like that in the burbs. Maybe Beretta Hills or something. Shook. Uh, I call Chris. Hey. Are you still there? No, I'm, 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 I'm out. Are you? I, I, I don't feel good. Um. I don't feel good at all. Do you need to pick you up something? Do I need to go get something? And no. Stop by the pharmacy or something, whatever. No, you didn't move all of your stuff here, did you? No. Okay. Your snake creeps me out. She's super gentle. Anyway, I, I, I think I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go see a friend uh, tonight. Where at? I don't know. I just don't want to be here. Why don't you let me come over and pick you up, and we can just drive. No, no, that place was super creepy, and I don't. I, I, um, I want to go. Are you I just wanna at not your place right now? No. You want to make a willpower? Sure. How deep is Chris James's willpower? That is a ten. All right. Well, you know, text me when you get to wherever you're going, so I can come see you. Okay. Hang up. Right about now, you'll probably be receiving a text from Zach that just says. My mom's been taken. And then you'll get like a little location sharing link where I basically am showing you where I'm at. I call Lazarus. Are you okay? She's gone. Was she taken? It's that woman that you described. The the one with the, the, the bone mask and the... Oh I got gosh. sent a photo. Like, she's gone. They took her and they, they, they want the book. Lazarus, listen to me. If you need to, let them believe that I have it. I'm not playing any games with my mom's life. I'm not going to ask you to. I, I'm just going to give it to I'm going to help. They're- no, no, no. I'm going to come help. And then my second question is, does your mom have an app that can track you? That can track me? Yes. No. Or else she would know what the fuck he has been doing this whole time. Okay. That's not her style, man. She's real like... she's cl- She clearly gives her kid a long leash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. No, they, they they want me. I probably shouldn't even be telling you as much as I have. They they just want me to meet them and and give them the book tomorrow night. I I have to do that. I can't risk anything else. Okay, where where is this going to happen? I swear to you, I'm not going to stop it. But I can be there as backup if something goes wrong. What was the name of the location again? It's the Banner the, Building. The Banner Building. It's one of the tallest buildings in Solis Bay. It's but it's like an office district. building yeah. skyscraper. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he okay. wants to, to meet at the, do you say the top of the building? Oh, yeah. Like the roof? Okay. Yeah. Like uh, Nakatomi Plaza kind of style? Okay. All right. Yeah. Like a, all right. Okay, then. Is there a helipad on it? Yes. Yeah. What time tomorrow? Sundown. Are you able to trace her location at all? The Kenmores are working on it. Okay. Try and see if they can find it. We can let Pride know as well. Yeah, I've, I've already reached out to Sasparil. Oh, Lazarus, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so, so very sorry. I'm trying to hide who I am to protect my family and to have a normal life, and it's just over. You, 
can't be a hero without endangering the people you love. This might be might be the last thing I do as Lazarus. You can't do this anymore. I hope not. You're really good at what you do. Yeah. The comments on loops say differently. I know. Never care about that stuff. Labyrinth, as you're talking, there is a knock at your door. Oh shit, that was that's a good point. No, I don't think I was I was walking out the door, but I think when he called I took it. I think your out. hand is about to go on the doorknob. You got phone in one hand, you got your backpack over the shoulder, your overnight bag over people. the shoulder. You look through the people. And there is a young woman about twenty seven. She's got brown hair, curly, really curly. She's uh, got kind of like an undercut, so it flops over to one side. Do I know this woman? She's not immediately familiar. Why don't you make an awareness roll for me? Okay. Seven. This person has a name tag on their blouse. It says, Hi, my name is Sharon. And she raises her arm. It knocks on your door again, very deliberately. I open the door. And when you open the door, she goes to jump on top of you. Okay. You make a prowess roll for me. Why am I making a prowess roll? You, uh, you're making coordination to get out of the way. I don't care. I just want to remind you, I will not make a prowess roll if I can avoid it. Sure. Um, 12. <laughs> you duck out of the way. She hits the floor and she looks and she's like, I have to bring you back. Did he tell you that? I have to bring you back. And it's like she's on a loop right now. She's going to get up. What are you going to do? I have my stuff. I'm going to walk out the door. You walk out the door. Close it behind me. <laughs> you close <laughs> it behind way. you. And then you hear footsteps coming up the stairs of your building. Mm-hmm. And there's more people with more name tags. Okay. I'm going to parkour up to the roof. You're just going to teleport to the roof and call it parkour? What does that work? Okay. There's people coming up the stairs. I can see the stairs then. Yes. And there are there stairs going up? There's an upstairs, so there's stairs that go up. Are these the only stairs? Yeah, it's not a big building. I am going to... You hear Zach Lapidus on the other end of the phone. <laughs> What's oh, going that's on? right, yeah. I'm being attacked, that's all. Yeah, I start... Um, are there other people on this floor? Two flats on each floor. So okay. six six units total. Okay. Uh, if there's another one, I bang on it and say, help, 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 help! And then I'm going to run upstairs. Just, like, if I can, like, bang on a door real quick. All right. To get to the stairs, you're going to have to avoid these people who are coming up the stairs. Okay. So you're running straight at these people that are coming up. Yeah. They're going to lunge at you and try to grab you. Okay. How would you like to avoid that? I'm going to jump over them. That is a not, a no, 11. So it's one of those, like, stairwells that go back and forth on the way up. Mm-hmm. And so you're able to duck in between these two. And you see there's, like, eight people. There's, like, a line of people climbing over themselves to get up these stairs and you kip up onto the banister and start making your way up to the third floor there's like it's kind of like a um there's a fire escape at the end of the hallway Mm -hmm. on the third floor i say i'm gonna have to call you back and hang up throw my phone as i run to the fire escape you run to the fire escape escape you kick open this door and there's like a buzzer sound that happens when the fire Mm -hmm. escape door opens Nice. And you see that your building has like a line of people wrapped around it like they're waiting to get into a concert. <laughs> nice. Okay. I go up, yep. pulling myself up to the so roof. Cat balled up onto the, the lip of the ledge of the, the roof. Mm-hmm. You're on top of the roof. Where's where's my, where's the garage or parking lot for the building? Or wherever I park my bike. You... <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a garage behind the building. There's like a parking garage nearby that um, people who people pay for. Okay. Like you, you pay a monthly fee for, but it's it's nearby. I left my bike my my Minotaur there just for a minute, but I'm going to try and leap over if I can. All right, jump from building to building. Mm-hmm. All right, give me a prowess roll. Prowess. Coordination? Sorry, coordination. That's a lot better. 13. 13, yeah. Describe how you want to do it. Is it taller or shorter gra- parking garage? Taller. It's a, it's a big Tall. parking garage. All right. Uh, so there's like a floor and really it is like taking a running leap and then Donkey Kong jumping through to like kip my legs up over the rail and in. 
and I know that it's one floor, actually it's not at the top, top floor, but the second to last floor. Mm -hmm. And so I just uh, race for the stairs and go up yeah. as quickly as possible. You can hear people going like, she's in the parking garage. Oh, great. All right. Because you're jumping over like a group of people in between the, <laughs> the two buildings. They're all watching you above. You jump into the next building, you're racing up to go get to the bike. I pop on it and yeah. I start taking off. You start racing down the rampway and there's a lot of people at the bottom. All right. By the time I, you get down there. I, I don't know that I'm going to go to the bottom, though, knowing that there's going to be just a bunch Just tell me where you're going to go. Can I make my motorcycle jump over the wall? Yeah. And out. We've okay. done this. That's what I thought. All right. Give me a little, help, a little motorcycle handling. A little. Motorcycle handling. What? What is that? Is that? All? Oh, that was a terrible roll. But what? What is my main attribute that I'm using? It would be coordination. Ten. I rolled a ten also. Ah. It's tough. So there's like a couple over. people in my way as I'm coming to Yeah, land. there's like one person who like jumps in front of your way and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> and you, you make it out, but your bike kind of skids on the ground and you feel like something kind of shake. Something's something's not quite right with the bike now. Oh no, shoot. There's a long way down. Uh, and you just see this group of people on one end, like pod people, you know, they're all pointing. Uh, I'm trying to take off, even though I know my bike's not feeling it. All right racing off can i tell what's wrong with the bike you give me an intelligence like, roll okay intellect is gonna be a nine nine yeah there's something with the fuel system dang it am i able am i like running out of fuel pretty yeah quickly this okay. is like a like you punctured something it's leaking can i tell where it's leaking from under the bike <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna try and get to well if far away is like like out of running distance and then i want to see if i can get to like a gas station yeah and get some duct tape because <laughs> that'll do it you want to get some duct tape to plug up a hole in the gas tank of your bike uh-huh that's not gonna work but sure you get some duct tape <laughs> i wanted to i just i didn't want it to work i just wanted to buy me a few more blocks basically yeah no 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 is it gonna blow up okay no, it what, will not. What I know, up. what I could quickly apply to my bike. It's like a puncture in a tube underneath the bike. Can I make it to my garage? My like my mechanic. Sure. Is that where you go? Yeah. You go to your mechanic? Frank. Frank. You go to your mechanic, Frank. I knew you'd come. <laughs> and uh I've said that line <laughs> several times in the show. <laughs> and he uh works on your bike and it's late. Mm -hmm. So late. And I'm here as Gracie. Yeah. And this is not Gracie's bike. This is a cool bike. Kind of like a Minotaur. Yeah. Kind of looks like the bike that Labyrinth uses. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I that was the aesthetic I was going for. Yeah, that makes sense. That checks out. And I sit there in silence. <laughs> you guys just he stare at each other. Like blinking. he's just kind of eyeballing me, like Yeah. We we gonna you ever gonna tell me this? And I'm like, nope. Dave, what are you doing? Zach is uh, cuddled up in the in mom mom's blanket, with a tub of ice cream. He's texting Jackson, saying, "Forget everything I said about being a hero. It's it's not worth it. Just is your family okay?" And Jackson says, "We're on our way out of town till this blows over." They took my mom. Is there any way you can use any of your contacts to find out if Mr. Bliss was behind this? in any way. He tells you he's afraid to make any phone calls with these people now. I understand. You have to watch out for your own family, but they have my mom, and I don't know what to do. What do they want with her? They just want something I have, so. I don't know. I All I remember with Mr. Bliss is that he seemed confused by you, like why you suddenly showed up on his doorstep. Yeah. This doesn't seem like Mr. Bliss's M.O. I just wanted to check. I'm really sorry. Thanks for taking the risk you took. And I'm sorry that I pressured you to take it because this life isn't easy. Polymorph died for us. Can't take that lightly. That certainly resonates within, within Zack. And he feels the weight of Polymorph's sacrifice. But is so conflicted with how to keep his family safe now that... 
people know who he is while still trying to honor the sacrifice that Polymorph made to save him. Yeah. So after pacing around his house for a while and knowing he's not going to be able to sleep, he he starts bounding towards towards the building. And he's just going to hang out on the top of a skyscraper for however many hours it takes. Eventually you get a call from Labyrinth. Hey. Hi. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it looks like uh, Nightcloak sent all of the all of the uh, Church of Biogenesis after me. So he knows who you are? Maybe. I'm sorry. Looks like this is all blowing up in both our faces. Look, I've been thinking. Gunk said that Mr. Bliss was didn't like Baron Nightcloak. Maybe, maybe he knows something? You want to try and align with Bliss? Maybe. Look, I can see. I can see if there's something. I'm not really comfortable doing anything. I don't want to catch them off guard. I, I know. That's why I said. They, they have the power in this situation, and... That's why I, I said can't... we let the trade go down as you planned. It's everything after. Because really what we don't want to happen, right, is that they destroy the universe. Do you know of any way to reach Lima? Is there any no. way that she could be behind any of this? She wanted the book more than anyone. Jay. What's up? Did Red Tips look anything like Lima? No. Okay. No, she did not. Lima was taken by the same person that took your mom. Could she be behind it? Maybe. It would be a great twist. Like And like you said, that's why we can let this go. But for right now, I have to assume that what Lima's people saw happening, Nick Northcutt destroying the universe with this book, is Baron Nightcloak getting it. I will not stop us from passing this on, but I, if I can get it back soon after, that's the best case scenario. If you can get what back? The book. So after the trade, you're going to try and take it back from them? Yeah. And... Labyrinth, honestly, you're scaring me with... I feel like a lot of these ways could end up with my mom getting killed. No, I won't do move until she's safe. And then you, Zack, need to go to Pride and go into protection. I know... I don't... I know you're a good hero. And... Believe me, if anyone knows what it's like to be a kid and to have all of this thrust upon you, it's me. But Polymorph didn't die to make you a hero. He died to save Zack. The Zack before Lazarus. You don't owe him anything. You owe him you. That's all. Thanks. I promise you I won't make any move if it seems like your mom's in danger. You know, I always wanted to be a hero as a kid and, and to make a difference and to help the city and, and to be one of the people that, you know, kids look up to. And now that I'm it in it, it's it's not glamorous. It's not black and white. And the people that you love just get hurt. I We, we may have to deal with the fallout of whatever's going to happen when they have the book, but the first step is giving it to them. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jay, and I hope you're enjoying the show so far. You might be wondering to yourself, hey, how can you show your appreciation for the work that we're doing here at Out of Depth? Let me tell you, friend, one way you can help us out is to just recommend the show to friends, strangers. Our goal is to get our stories out to as many ears as we can, so word of mouth is huge for us. Recommending the show to your friends or leaving a review at whatever site you're listening to us at, that goes a long way to helping us find and build our audience. But Jay, you may say, I've got a little coin in my pocket. I'd like to throw it your way. How do I get it It from my pocket to your pocket? Well, you can go to patreon.com slash get out of depth and subscribe at any tier you feel comfortable for as long as you would like to. Patrons get access to some other behind-the-scenes info on the show, such as character questionnaires and my maps. They also get first access to our raw recording videos for each episode and exclusive access to our post-season Q&A 
where we discuss the story and answer questions from subscribers. So if you want that kind of access to us, you're only going to get that at patreon.com slash get out of depth. That money helps us pay for artists and collaborators and expand our ability to create fun stories for you to enjoy. We don't do ads or paid endorsements for games, which means support from listeners just like you is absolutely vital to our growth. If you want to be a part of that, you can do it at patreon.com slash get out of depth. Thank you so much. Holy shit. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the show and see who our heroes will save today. Lazarus, you get a text from Gary Kenmore for a location. You go and check it out, and it's an empty building. Your mom's cell phone is sitting on a table with some of her hair. Some of her hair? Yeah. Like, does it look like they cut some of her hair off? or Yeah. That they, like, ripped it out? No, it was a very clean cut. How much of her hair? Like, did they give her a haircut to, like, conceal her identity or something? No, like four inches. That's weird. Off her ponytail. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Was it like a um, take is the it, ponytail? Yeah. I mean, I bet it's probably just kind of a random ass building, but is it is it like close or connected to either Bliss or, or Bear Night Cloak in terms of the location? No, it's just a rundown Nowheresville building. And now I know I don't have any way of contacting them until the meeting. Because I have the phone. Yeah. So it's sundown the next day. What is your plan? I've been on top of the building for hours before sundown, just kind of like randomly pacing, you know, doing some of my cheerleading practice at the rooftop here just to occupy my time and my I'm mind. I'm going to say this before we commit to this. Yeah. It is a tall, tall fucking building. Yeah. And it's pretty windy. And I know you're not going to sleep much while you're up here. Yeah. But if you spend all night and all day the next day, I don't think that I can give you, you're, there's going to have to be some kind of penalty. No, I, I, I know. I, I don't feel like Zach would be okay. able to sleep though. You know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I just want to, I, I just want to run that by I, you before we get to that. And I go like, well, you I do have feel to suffer I, something. I, I know there's a penalty, but I also think it causes me trouble in, in, and that's the result of like being a mama's boy. This is part of the trouble that goes along with this is that. I, I'm so fixated on just getting her back that... Okay. Oh, boy. Because part of it can be like, you know, if I'm not fully resting, do I re regain... Because I used all my healing except for one point. Like, are those things that would get replenished if I'm not uh, Well, sleeping, we had you know? decided that healing only takes a couple hours to get your stamina back up. Oh, okay. Of, like, not doing shit. So my healing has... Okay. I'm going to see if there's something about... Exhaustion. I I will come up with something. Yeah, we could do like minus one to all my stats. We could do yeah, let's do that. Minus one to all the stats. Okay. Yeah, I think that checks out. Yeah. All right. But in return, I get some determination from the trouble, eh? Yes, you do get all an right. extra determination for sure. Yeah, I think this is a pretty determined situation. Yeah. So, so that would how many determination points would you have then? Because that that does roll over, so you, or that you do gain that for the next. So day. that would give me three cool beans. So wait, I I do have to clarify that my my awareness is now zero. Oh, you're geez. delirious. You're like I don't know what's yeah. going on. You're yeah. like they're not uh, gonna even. They're gonna like have to come and like tap you on the shoulder, and you're not gonna be yeah. paying attention. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh. <laughs> I I had something I wanted to do that day before we get to Sunday. Yeah, sure. What is it? One, I want to actually test text Sarsaparilla and say. Um, you know about Lazarus's mom? Oh, Washington yeah. Mark. We know about his mama. Yeah, I, I was planning that, like, I reached yeah. out to him, basically said, be ready to, like, whisk her away. Like, don't get anywhere near the site. But, like, once she's free, the plan is to be able to give her to pride so that they can protect her. And then her. I'm going to go to Cheesy's house. Okay. As Labyrinth. And. During the day? Uh, early, early morning. Okay. You knock on the door. <laughs> How do you, what do you want to do? You want to get invisible and go meet Cheesy? I'm invisible waiting for him to like come out either to like get in his car, take out the garbage, whatever. He's taking out the garbage. It's overflowing. I walk up to him, become visible. He screams, falls backwards, 
knocks over the trash can, all that garbage that was overflowing spills out into the street. I need to talk to Bliss. Look, there's a lot of problems going on right now, okay, lady? Like, uh, I'm persona non grata right now. Why are you persona non grata? Because you fucked up my truck, which fucked up a shipment. Actually, I didn't. (laughs) Someone who looks exactly like you (laughs) fucked up my truck, (laughs) fucked up a shipment. You don't get, I I can't, I'm nobody. I, I, I just make deliveries. I did make a delivery. I give him my card. Tell Bliss, Labyrinth, once, Baron Nightcloak, anything he can tell me, I will take him out. This is my number. Direct line. Switching sides, aren't you, sweetheart? I like it. This suits you. What does that mean? Everybody knows you're, you know. No, what? You're not a goody two-shoes. You don't necessarily play by the rules. What are the rules? I mean, you know, somebody like you, you you get a lot done doing a lot of breaking and entering. Yep. All right, I'll try. This certainly might get his attention. Whatever you can do. Tell him it's a matter of life or death. So this chance may only be a one-time thing. All right. And I go invisible. Zach Lapidus, sun's come up. It's morning. You're still on this building. The pigeon drops down right next to you. You karate chop this pigeon. You no. straight up murder this pigeon. No, no. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just reading your body language. I'm it trying startles to... me. It startles me. I'm delirium. You're I scared of this pigeon and fall off back, the building. And I'm paranoid about whether it's a... Is it a trap? Is a spy? <laughs> is it? They also control animals, man. Yeah. They're spot, yeah. Is Baron Nightcloak in this pigeon's dreams right now? Oh, jeez. You're looking at this pigeon like maybe it's a fucking Nightcloak pigeon. It's watching me. By the way, I would like to head to the banner building after after I talk to Cheesy. I'm so delirious. I'm gonna start cooing back at it and see if. Uh... <laughs> You're See if cooing, I speak pigeon. You and this pigeon are on top of the building, <laughs> cooing back and forth. Yeah, I start confiding in this pigeon. Yeah, I learned from the pigeon that it's also it's also looking for its mother. Or at least that's what I feel. And, Making a awareness uh, check. Oh, <laughs> oh, rolled my max. That's a six. All right, you know it's just a pigeon. <laughs> just Ooh. barely, though. Just barely. It was close. I had a five. Yeah, we're just going to be cool then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to do some cheerleading routines uh, and practice. Yeah. And, uh, you now have a new sidekick. Yeah. Lazarus and Pigeon. Yeah. It, Pidgey. His name's Pidgey. Pidgey. Yeah. Cut back to Labyrinth. You get a phone call from an unknown number. Hello? Is this Labyrinth? The... Labyrinth. Do I recognize this voice at all, first and foremost? Sounds like Mr. Bliss. Do I know what Mr. Bliss sounds like? Do I know? Do I hear? <laughs> yes, you met him in episode six. I thought I just saw him, but I did Okay. Maybe I heard him talking you, and all right, forget Okay, it. You cool, don't know cool. who this is. You have no idea. It doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> no, Jesus. No, no. <laughs> no idea who it is. So this is the Labyrinth. Can we start this conversation now? Is this Bliss? Yes. There you go. It's me. Christ. All right. Is this labyrinth? Yes. I heard you want to do a job for me. Kind of. I want to do a job for me, but I know that it's in your best interest that I do it. And what would you want from Mr. Bliss? Mm -hmm. Any aiding and abetting? Well, I'm sorry, but I don't work for people. You have no information, Mr. Bliss? You? I got tons of information. I just don't work for anybody. What would you want with Nightcloak? He needs to be stopped. He's about to literally destroy the universe. Everybody's stopping the universe. Are you? So tell me, what would you want me to do? I need him stopped. He controls people's minds. I... Agree. But what would you want me to do? I've already told you. You want him stopped? I've been working on that for years now. So, what have you been working on? As I said, information. Why aren't you giving your minion the information to do what you need done? So you work for me now? 
No. Call it uh, consulting. Freelance contractor. That work? It's hard to know a lot about him. All I know is this. He has some artifacts. Alien artifacts that give him his powers. Alien? Oh, yeah. Do you know how he got them? Stole them. Are they something that he wears? Carries? It's a combination of things. Sometimes it's books. Sometimes it's, uh... We believe there's an amulet around his neck. That's where a lot of his uh, voodoo comes from. Okay, then. He thinks it's magic, but... I have it on very good authority that it is from another dimension, another universe. I believe that, sir. Now, if you could get that to me, this could be the start of a pretty, pretty good relationship. Hmm. Okay. Good to know. Thank you, Mr. Bliss. I'll be seeing you. No, you won't. Click. Sick. All right. I don't have anything else. (laughs) I got nothing else, which means we're about to do this. Yep. David, are you ready? Is there anything you want to do? I'm giving you a ch- This is the fucking all the marbles. And as we all know, David has had really bad luck with marbles in the past. <laughs> Devastator. <laughs> Devastator, <laughs> man. It's the Devastator. Just got to go with your gut, Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I assume uh, pride is pride is kind of at the bottom of the building, right? If you is, is can we, see him, then that? you would be able to assume that my characters can see him. Would you want that? No, no. But I, I, th- I think like you know, working it out where just like Sarsaparilla and like an unmarked car is ready to like you know drive my mom away once once I get her. Not like a whole like pride thing, but just like a guy in a car. You know how pride does it. They do it big, but they don't do it at all. <laughs> well, then I'm going to call Jasper. <laughs> yeah, Sarsaparilla is circling around. Yeah, because, uh, you know, Sarsaparilla not going to pass an opportunity to hit on my mom. He's in an El Camino. Yeah, sure is. It's his. He busted it out for this mission. So this thing is like... This is like, what, like 120 stories or something like that? Some crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can fall to your death here. Any other plans? It's okay if not. No, no, no. I, I, I was probably going to do this, like, in the actual combat, but I can do it ahead of time. Well, not to say that there's going to be combat. But uh, I am going to put a individual poly in the in the folds of the book. This will probably take a determination point to do this. Yes. But because I have a connection with this. A little tracking device. Yeah, exactly. You dog, you. We, I mean, we've set this up. Mm-hmm. We know you can do this. Yep. So I am going to put a poly in the book. Okay. Gail, one last time. What are you doing? I park my bike far, far away from the banner building. Yes. And leave my phones there. Yes. I am Labyrinth. I also take the book that I have. Yes. The junior book. The junior book. Yeah. And keep that on me. Turn invisible. Head up to the roof. My plan, just so it's clear, is to be silent, to be invisible, and just to make sure that Miss Lapidus gets to gets off this roof safely. I will not intervene unless okay. her safety is at risk. Okay. But I will intervene then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Take the elevator up. Labyrinth. There is a gray steel door between you and the roof. What do you want to do? Do you want to open this door? No, actually, I think I can stay there. Okay. And listen. You're inside this room. Sun starts to set over the ocean. From up here, you can see the surfers just north of Steadvast Bay, catching in some more waves. You can see the businessmen in this district starting to evacuate buildings, going to their homes, going to their after-work bar that they like to attend. All of these people that Polymorph has saved, that Labyrinth has saved, 
The sun descends past the horizon. Darkness comes. And in a blink, it happens too fast to notice. A ledge, 60 feet from where you're standing, is suddenly this assassin and your mother on her knees. Her hair is wind swept, fear in her eyes. She's bound and gagged, and the assassin stands on the ledge looking at you. You don't know how they got there. I thought the Baron would come with you. She has no reaction to this. You hear from behind her mask a voice that says, No more tricks. We want the book. What are you going to do with it? Remake the world. If I give you this book, will my mom be safe? Will you leave her alone? Once we have the book, you can have your mother. I reach into my chest and pull out this awkwardly sized coffee table book that uh, looks real fancy and send her over here. I need you to make a coordination roll. Yeah. All right. It's a minus one because I'm exhausted, but I rolled my max, which is an 11. You're fast, but you're not as fast as her. Yeah. And in another blink of the eye, you are standing, staring at your mother, and the book is no longer in your hand. And behind you, you can hear the flutter of metallic pages. I whirl around behind me to see what I can You turn around, and she's standing behind you, 30 feet away. She's just flipping through the pages very quickly. And you see her hand vibrate at incredible speed. And she takes her hand and digs it into the book as if her molecules are vibrating through it. And it looks like it's very painful for her to do this. And then she pulls her hands out. She shakes her hand off. Why do you think the world even needs to be remade? What's so wrong with it? You tried to be a hero for over a year now, and you can't. You can't be a hero in this kind of world. That's because of people like you. If you tried to be a hero with me, none of this would have happened. The world is bigger than us. I'm well aware, but how exactly do you think you're going to be remaking the world into something better with this book? It's not up to me. Who's it up to? It's up to him. And over her shoulder, you can see a building. It's a little bit shorter than the banner building that you're standing on, but it has a massive spire. And you see a figure levitating above this building. Storm clouds form overhead. Thunder erupts. And you are staring at the face of what appears to be Nick Northcutt shrouded in a midnight cloak and he is slowly levitating and crossing this divide between the two buildings he makes his way over and drops behind Cardia he tells her the book Cardia she hands him the book of unknown devils he opens its pages you've delayed our work long enough he says to you, Lazarus. It's nice to finally meet you while I wake. Let us away. What are you going to do with it, Baron? Do what we have failed to do every day, every moment. I'm going to change the world. Everyone says they're going to change the world. How does changing the world, what does that mean to you? What are you going to do? I can't explain it. I can only show you. And he rises higher and higher into the clouds, and this lightning is striking. And he starts flipping through the book. Zach, get her out of there. <laughs> That's what it, that is exactly what Labyrinth is saying on the other side of the door. And he is going to start reading from this book. Zach is going to take his mom, and he's, he's going to hold backwards towards your mother, grab her. Yeah, he's, he's going to hold on to her and basically kind of using his arm, just like stretch and kind of just repel 
down the side of the building with her. It's going to be hard because I don't think you can stretch the length of this building. There's not enough polys to, oh, to do that. Point. You can't Sky cover scraper. that kind of distance. And hold her. Yeah. I was thinking of like, you know. Doing it like that. Yeah, okay. Hmm. You put her arms, her arms are tied. You wrap it around your neck. And, she can, and my like, body is out. like sticky as well, so she oh, can yeah, kind of just right. yeah, yeah. adhes to me. I can kind of like form like a little like seatbelt around her in a way. Alright. I need a coordination <laughs> check for you to try and do this. The nine. You're barely gonna be able to succeed this. I almost murdered both of you guys. You're bounding down this building. It's gonna take a few turns for you to do this, but you're going down, and you can see like people looking up at what was this sunny day. And the visage of Baron Nightcloak reciting a passage from this book as he's starting to cast this ritual, this spell, Labyrinth. You can hear it like the electricity in the air is not like a storm. It's it's infecting your whole being with unease. I am going to slowly open the door. Yeah. Quietly. I need you to make a coordination roll. And if you have like a stealth talent or something like that. I don't. Skill. Quality. No, I will say I'm supposed to add plus two for my invisibility, but okay. I don't know. Twelve. Yeah. You open this door and you don't see Zach. You don't see his mom. You just see Cardia staring up. That assassin who beat the shit out of you mm-hmm. all the way back in episode two, which was only like a week ago in game time. Okay. She's staring up at him as he's reciting from this book. I would like to fee blast. Fee blast. Who are we fee blasting? Because you have two options. I do. But the, the more important one to... is that one. Yep. So you're going to fee blast Baron Nightcloak out of the sky. And he has danger sense. Okay. All right. What do you got? Um, 11. Ooh, I got a nine, which gives you a two. That is a moderate, yes, moderate success. The effort succeeds. You blast. What were you trying to blast? You are blasting him, is what you said, right? Yeah, we're going to do eight damage. Eight? Yes. You get eight for fucking fee blast? Shit. Okay. Oof. You hit him with this, and it fucking rocks him so hard he almost drops the book and you see him turn his his cape his cloak billowing around him and uh keeping him aloft Mm -hmm. and he scowls at you his face looking much older than the nick northcut that you knew and he says cardia get her and i i as part of my move like i fee blast and immediately move so that wherever they think it came from i'm Mm -hmm full movement away. All right. Cardia is going to race around. Gail, do you want to do your coordination check to see if I can avoid figuring out where you are? My invisibility check. It's yeah. raining. Okay. So I use my invisibility level pl- plus a roll. Usually do you need me to take something off or? Well, I, I'll, I'll just give myself a bonus. Okay. How about that? Okay. I have a nine. Eleven. All right, she's racing around, trying to find you, and Bear Nightcloak <laughs> yells, "Over there, you fool!" and descends <laughs> down to get out of the way of your feet blast. It's a big building, so if he gets down on one side, it's gonna—you can't just like go get him because yeah. he's, he's on the other side of the building now. What do you want to do? Um, she's so looking he's, around. Is he is he down? behind a building or is he's he... down behind the building you're on but okay, he's on so the I other could... side of the building so i could run across and it's too feasibly... it's too big to make it all the way over there and shoot okay then i am going to i'm going to run all the way over there all right can use... i yes see him to keep running off the building onto him you're gonna like run and jump off the building but i gotta know if i've got enough movement <laughs> Uh, I'll allow it because this is so like, like watching him descend kind of knowing like at what yeah. rate he was yeah, going yeah, yeah. down that I could yeah. you just run and jump off the side of this building and make a coordination roll this is going to be 
really fucking hard. I want to remind everybody at home <laughs> that Labyrinth <laughs> is not a super, like a, she's still just a human. She can just turn invisible. That's it. She's just a regular person. I've There's been no, trained like, how to make people not see me. That is 13. I may. Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? Yeah. I'm going to use a determination point for an improved effort and make it a 15. Okay. Make sure that I land exactly as I want to on him. How do you want to land exactly on him? With my hands wrapped or arms wrapped around his neck and my legs wrapped around his waist. Particularly my hands around his neck where an amulet might be. You collide with him and the book, you hit him so hard, the book falls out of his hands and it's descending towards the street below. And now you are too, as you all are free falling. Okay, I hang on to him. (laughs) Yeah, you're going to hang on to him. He shouts, Cardia the book. And then, I don't know if anybody remembers the last time that he was on using his powers. He phases and you go through him. Can I try to grab again? He is incorporeal. So wait, like his clothes too, everything? Yeah. C- catching, capturing the am. Could I feel the amulet before any of that happened? I mean, yeah, but I mean, okay, I gave you my- a lot in your last turn, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm falling. You're now descending. So- I would like to aim for the book. Yes! Am I still here? Yes. <laughs> You're taking a long time monkey Getting, climbing down. So the it side has of been two turns. You said it would take a, a few, two, a couple well, rounds. But like as soon as I left, that's when you decided to attack. I assume there might be like, well, you know, a turn. I said in I there wasn't going to move until your mom was safe, man. She kept her promise. I promised. She, she totally kept her promise. She could have came out earlier and it could have got real ugly. Yes. Lazarus, you get to the bottom of this building and you look up and you can see. Labyrinth is free falling and the book is like 10, 20 feet away from her. And Lazarus, you also see running down the side of the building a red streak. (laughs) Ah. What would you want to do, Lazarus? Your mom hits the ground and she is exhausted. Yeah. She was like screaming through this gag the whole time and you also realize she doesn't know who you are other than you're Lazarus I am gonna peel back the purple hood and just say to her well well, now you know and I give her a kiss on the cheek and I slingshot myself up I, 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 I like when I lowered myself to the ground I'm still holding on to that anchor to point on the building yes. and then I just whew, you know just yes you slingshot yourself catapulting yourself as fast as you can this is fucking amazing <laughs> you are sailing towards up towards the book Cardia is running down the side of the building oh my god <laughs> this is so fucking epic I'm so happy David, I need you to make a coordination roll. Gail, I need Labyrinth to make a coordination roll. What, what's the roll for? What are you trying to accomplish with your slingshot? So let me just have the scene right. So Labyrinth is falling. The book, is she like, how close is she to the book? She's She's got to make up some ground on the book. Yeah. She's not close enough to grab it. She's going to have to start falling faster to catch this book. Yeah. <laughs> she has uh, to make, make herself sick. go faster. All right. So I... I'm going to try and, oh, shit. I'm going to punch, uh, what's her name, Cambria? Cardia. 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 I'm, I'm going to sling up, and in one hand, I'm, like, reaching for the book. and the other hand, I'm just, like, trying to punch her in her tracks to mm. stop her. No? Got to pick one, man. <gasps> I'm, I'm going I'm going for the red flash there. Oh. All right. Cardia with a K. K-A-R-D-I-A. So trusting that she can get the book if I take out Cardia, I'm I'm going to do a prowess roll on Cardia. Go for it. Oh man, I rolled pretty good. Oh no. That is a thirteen. And you have a minus one? No, that's factoring the minus one? one. Okay. I got a thirteen also. She's fast. So you're gonna half succeed with this. You're gonna hit her. And it's going to like spin her off course a little bit. Yeah. And she's going to take half damage 
almost half damage. When you hit her, she she has like this suit on, and it feels like you're hitting bone, like red dyed bone. What is your strength score again, so I can? So with the minus one, it's four. So half it's two. Oh boy, you do hit her. Labyrinth, I need you to make a coordination roll to try and catch this book. This is fucking bonkers, by the way. So the difficulty for this is high. Oh. And I just rolled another banger. This is hero shit. Do I use my last determination point on this? Okay, maybe. Because, yeah, I was about to say, like, this was not the best roll. Yep, last determination point as she strains to using all all that she can to make herself as aerodynamic as possible, almost like swimming through the air. That will be a 13. You're like a missile going towards this book. You're in just at the last second, you reach your arms out and you grab a hold of the book and bring it in close to your chest as you are descending deeper and deeper further and further down as you see Lazarus catapulting himself up the building striking at the streaking cardia and as you start to twist and turn in the air you see floating above you Baron Nightcloak bearing down on you quickly towards your direction and you don't know what's worse what's waiting for you at the bottom, or what's coming at you from the top. 